Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to our beloved show, Story Dive, where we go into all things storytelling and break into the industries that won't let us in, no matter how hard we knock. We're, we're coming to knocking, now we're just bringing the train. I am your host today, I and this is my co-host, Logan. Hello, I am Logan. I'm, I'm coming to knock. And he's coming to knocking. With a train? Too, with with, some, with some doubloons, bro. Ah, he's knocking with the, the doubloons yeah. are in our arm. Which I learned the other day was not the caboose that holds our doubloons. It yeah. is. It was one of our comments. Um, yeah, I saw it too. I'll find I, that real quick. I was like, uh-oh. We got, we got doubloons. I got a blue. I I actually I had to spend a lot of time picking up my doubloons from our our fight last time because you knocked them right out of me. Oh yeah, so big. Yeah, but I, I got them, and I actually well, found I found another one. Uh, I think someone else dropped one. So nice. Yeah, <laughs> in the fight. Yeah, it better not be mine. I think I think maybe someone was like uh, throwing money during the fight to like cheer me. Ah, uh, but uh, heck yeah. I don't know. You know, it's like you just you, you take what you take what you get sometimes. You know. I'm not gonna ask questions. Yeah, you, you, maybe it was the ref, you know, throwing a, a tint for good, bro. For good, uh, Probably was good performance. I saw that he he the goes coal to the, car. <laughs> the ref goes to the arcade That's a lot, so he probably had some extras. Yeah, some extras to the arcade. Uh, arcades, uh, they tend to have. Lots of good graphics on their games these days. I don't know when the last time you've been to an arcade. Yeah. Um, we well, got some good stuff. Yeah, I think the last time, I mean, you know, there are a few arcades out where we live. And uh, it's been a minute, especially because, like, COVID, when, that, when the pandemic and everything happened. Like, nobody, nobody's going out. So, like, arcades are kind of off the table for a minute there. Um, and, you know, video games are getting so much better. that It's like, why leave the house? But um, I think the last like the newest arcade game i have experienced was the luigi's mansion one in it was in california i went to an arcade on santa monica pier and they had the luigi's mansion uh arcade game you know where the, it's kind of like the the shooter ones like the the jurassic park ones where you have to go in and sit down what uh, yeah and it had the same it was it, i think it was in between, it was before luigi's mansion 3 came out so it was like graphics that were better than Luigi's Mansion 2, uh, but they weren't quite as good as 3. But yeah, really good CGI. Really good. Uh... <laughs> this game looks great. Did you look it up? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at pictures. Dude, yeah. So yeah, you actually like used a vacuum and like, <laughs> it, was, it was great. You a vacuum up to the screen. Yeah. That's awesome. T tons of doubloons were to be had in that game. And, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was good. I think that's the probably the newest uh and most high-tech arcade game i've ever played uh gotcha I, unless you count because okay. you know i know that like going to theme parks like their cgi is a little more advanced you know especially nowadays they're, they're using less like prop replicas for like uh like dinosaurs and things oh right yeah they're using more That's like true. like cgi and things like that so but yeah and uh, hey that Bring yeah. this right into our uh, discussion today, not to cut you off too hard, at the knees. <clears throat> that's, that's, that's all I had. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that is exactly what we are talking about, is CGI, or uh, what does it stand for? Let's see. Uh, wait, wait. Can I, can I guess? Can I guess? Oh, yeah. Guess. Guess. Computer graphics, I think. And then, what is the I? Can, computer graphics uh interface <laughs> that is exactly what i thought it was as well but i just looked it up it actually means computer generated imagery ah wait that actually that makes, makes sense. so much more sense <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, we got computer it's, right it's nothing that i thought it would be but it ended up being exactly what it should be so right yes that's typically how life is mhm mm indeed mhm mm mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, in the realms of computer graphics, uh, I have some interesting information on like how it started, what kind of the first implementations of it were, 
But when I say CGI, what's like the first things that come to your mind? Um, like Jimmy Neutron or like Casper the Ghost. Like those, those are like okay. the, literally the first things that popped into my brain. Um, because I don't know. I mean, uh, would three D shows like Jimmy Neutron would that would that count as CGI or is that just like is that a different kind? Uh, yeah, I would consider it. It's because it's at its core shows like Jimmy Neutron or uh, I'm trying to think of then? anything like that. Uh, they used 3D modeling. That's still animation. And I would say animation is a form of CGI. Okay. Um, but like, I, I, I guess what I'm asking is, is CGI typically. Because I, th- I I think when I think of CGI, like if I were to have to hard pick a definition, it would be like when you put 3D modeling that's realistic into like a live action thing, like setting. So I think that's for the sake of this conversation, we're going to go down that route. Yeah. Where it's, yeah. it's going to be its implementation in live action esque stuff. Because yeah. uh, animation is kind of its own story medium. Yes. And CGI is just a way to use stuff in animation. So I think we'll talk about specifically 3D modeling animation or animation in general in another episode. So for the sake of just this one, when I sit, when we're talking about live action implementations, yes. what what then comes to mind? Okay, like, so I actually have a lot more now in my brain. Do you want me to just go off? Gotcha. <laughs> Yeah, go off. Okay, dude. Uh, Stuart Little. Uh, you know Garfield one and two. Stuart <laughs> Little. Uh, oh my Al- gosh. Al- Alvin and the Chipmunks. Um, there's also Stuart Little too. And then there's uh, let's see, the there's the Sonic movies that have been coming out recently. Okay. There's uh, there's a lot of like little animal mascot movies, right? Like uh, Scooby Doo, I think was a big one. Mm. Um, and then of course you know, like the newer Star Wars movies and. Even like the newer Lord of the Rings, like I, it's kind of hard not to have a movie these days that doesn't have CGI. Uh, any movie that's right. after 2010, you probably will have some kind of CGI in it. So, but yeah, a, a lot of those animal mascot movies kind of like spotlight it. I feel like, uh, but they're also kind of weird because <laughs> it's like you know Garfield, he does look realistic, but like Odie's just a regular dog in that movie, and so it's just kind of weird, you know. So. That's super weird. <laughs> yeah, like Scooby Doo uh, is like somehow passable because Scooby Doo is just kind of he's he's just Scooby Doo. So like, oh, I don't know. It's like he's already goofy as heck as a character. Yeah, so I, I don't get him. Yeah, and Sonic's from another world, right? But it's like, yeah, it is kind of weird. Kind of weird. Uh, the Smurf movies. Well, okay, I, I'm, gosh, done. Movies. <laughs> I'm done. I'm <laughs> done. It's the, the it's true movie. that like these days it's hard to think of a a movie that doesn't have an ounce of CGI. Um, most movies do, at least in the realm of like any kind of action or mm-hmm. fictional characters. If you just do like a rom com, there's maybe right. some CGI, but right, it's not necessary to to get the that is true message across. So, uh, on the concept of sonic specifically sonic the hedgehog the live action movies we know and the world knows that it was it was looking really bad for a minute Mm -hmm. um and it it, i doubt that there's hardly anyone that doesn't know this story but just for clarification's sake when sonic the hedgehog the first cgi i guess live action movie uh came out what year was it? It was twenty. Oh, it's twenty twenty that oh, it yeah. came out. Okay. Uh, the first trailer I think came out in twenty nineteen okay. or twenty eighteen. One yeah, or the other. It was. And it was in the works for a long time. I remember. It was but... in the works, but as soon as we got a first look at the first trailer, Sonic looked like actual genuine nightmare fuel. Yeah, it was not good. It was really bad. It was horrifying to look at him it was bad enough that the internet went absolutely insane the entire sonic the hedgehog fan base plus a ton of people that might not even have been fans of sonic uh 
This went rampant on the internet. Enough so that Sega and the animation team uh, kind of rolled it back and said, hey, we're going to need some more time because we're redoing the entire movie because Sonic is nightmare fuel, and we understand that. Yeah. Um, do you know about like all of the rumors and things about like them doing that on purpose? No, I... Cause I'm I, not familiar with that. There's a lot of theories out there that they actually did this all as like a publicity stunt because on, it's it's as you said, but right before where you're like, I doubt there, like I doubt you haven't heard of this. Like everybody knows about this story, and it just makes me wonder if it is true. If they actually did plan, like I wonder if the movie they already planned on him having that newer design, and and they just released the trailer with like the old design to kind of stir up some you know some crazy shock value like yeah. everyone crapping on the movie kind of thing and i honestly think that the movie's bigger because of it whether or not they did it on purpose i do think that because of this whole cgi fiasco like it ended up being more popular which is crazy interesting yeah i didn't think of it that way um Wow, if they did, tons of doubloons for them. Because yeah, that's that's a meta thing to do. Yeah, what a story. You know what I mean? It's a... <laughs> a story on its own. Yeah, it's a story on its own. It's crazy. So as as we're talking about this, it's very clear that there's good ways to implement CGI and that there's ways that it can go horribly, horribly wrong. Yeah. Um, and I want to explore that. So by the end of this discussion, I want us to have a clear vision of if we ever try to use CGI or any person listening to this tries to use CGI, they can understand a little bit better when to use it, when not to use it, why and why not, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Okay. Where should we start? So let's do... I actually want to start in... I got some suggestions from my brother, so I was talking to him about this. Cool. Uh, and he He's the one that kind of mentioned some things, and I'm, I'm very interested to explore. So... Let's do it. There are... There's a piece of CGI early on that was just kind of special effects. That's where I feel like it really started. Being able to show like someone's hand on fire or uh, I guess some of the earliest implementation of it was people falling from buildings and being able to survive thanks to CGI and mm. having the person not actually have to jump off the building. Right. Even though nowadays people do that for stunts anyway. Like, I mean, heck, Tom Cruise strapped himself to an airplane. Yes. And yeah, so I, sometimes it's very real. And now we we just don't know. Like, when you watch the movie, you're yeah. like, I don't know if he actually did this. <laughs> but if it's Tom right. Cruise, like, 10 out of 10 times, it was, it was probably real. So, Oh, yeah. he We know that he does all his own stunts. <laughs> yeah. But in a, at least early on, and I think this is one of the first elements of CGI in story, specifically, I guess, in live action film and TV shows, is special effects, practical effects. Explosions, fire, lightning water magic uh -huh. and, you know you name it it's probably there magical creatures and there's good implementation of that and there's bad but i, I do feel like the good implementations and the test of time where they still look yeah decent even though technology has progressed far beyond what that original technology could handle yes so some examples of that would be um, any Iron Man special effects that mm. happen? Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm not thinking about um, like because I mean you were just mentioning like fire on hands and stuff, but like it is interesting how like I don't think of CGI as like just effects. Um, I I tend to think of it as like, you know, 3D creatures and things. Um, yeah, that and we'll we'll get to real. that. I just wanted to tackle the practical effects. No, I know. I just, I, uh, I've never thought about like Iron Man as like a CG movie, you know? Mm. So it's just interesting how I'm now like looking at it 
differently in my brain. I'm like, oh yeah, like all those beams and things. That's all CGI, you know? And like, what's the line between CGI and like special effect? Is there, is there a line or is it all the same? Uh, special effects are often done in person because you can definitely tell the difference between like uh, a TV show with a CGI explosion and then take a uh, Michael Bay Transformers movie uh, okay. and you can tell that those are real explosions. Okay, cool. Um, and there's a very clear distinction and I'm not sure why we can't uh, CGI an explosion good enough to make it seem like a real explosion. Yeah. Is it just budgeting problem? Is it inexperience? What exactly is it that makes makes a CGI explosion look so bad? I mean, and sometimes they look good, but again, it's like it's like it never beats the real thing, no matter how good you can get it. And I don't know, there's something to be said about that. Maybe that is uh, a problem with CGI, is that it can be good to the point where it's like acceptable and sometimes it can even be exceptional, but I, I feel like the real thing will always beat out CGI, which is usually like, I feel like CGI usually excels in things that we can't actually do in real life. But if you're trying to replicate something that's real, I feel like that's where CGI kind of falls short. Gotcha. I see. That's my theory, right? I don't have like evidence. That's a that very, very good theory. But we should talk about it. Yeah. I, well, so another, I guess, if you're, we're stepping into the Marvel realm once yeah. more, in the, I actually got to watch a video a while back about sling rings and the, the magic of the sling ring, how they how oh, they do that. Oh, wait, sling ring, that's yeah. Ping Cheng Chi? Or... That's Doctor Strange. Oh, um, the sling ring, okay, sorry. Um, it's it's when he does his, like, hand yes. circle thing. And the you you, you mean, like, the sparky like circle thing that opens up right is that what we're talking yes, about that exact thing. like that effect specifically yes okay so that actually is a mix between a real life prop that Ooh. they build in the scene on site they they had a kit like a real kit that basically they would set up on set and it once uh What's his name? Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, once he would start doing his hand, or I guess whoever would start doing their circle thing, they would light up the circle around them and speed up the lights as it would go around. Uh -huh. And then that was like their pre setup to get that practical effect. And then once they handed it off to the CGI team or the, you know, whatever editing team they would put in that special sparking effect around that light and then they would speed it up and they would just put a green screen behind the person in the circle so that they could green screen a, a different location. Dude, that's so smart. Like all of that is so smart. And I love the lights because that means that the lighting that is shown on the characters is like real lighting. You know what I mean? It's natural. It's yes. normal. So I, th I feel like that's very smart that they did that with the light. Um, because not only is it immersive for the actor to be like, I can actually see what the, what I'm doing, like what my character is doing and like see where the portal is going to be, but the lighting is also real. So they don't have to edit the lighting. They just have to like edit the actual prop itself. That's, that's really smart. I think that that's one of the best examples I've seen of how to utilize CGI, honestly. So, yeah, I it led me to this kind of belief when I was talking to the, my brother. He said um, a very quotable line. CGI is meant to enhance stories, not to tell them. Oh, okay. It's just, it's just an element of the story. It's not meant to tell the story itself. Oh, yeah. Leaning too hard on CGI to tell the story can make it kind of jarring. Um, and with the with the sling ring example it's such a good example because it's cgi enhanced something that they already had in real life and made it really cool i remember seeing the, the sling ring for the first time when i watched dr strange for the first time and feeling like that's super cool how did they do that how did 
how did they make that? That CGI looks so good, and it's because it's not really 100% CGI. Yeah. Hey, so I I I have a uh, a topic I wanted to bring up, if that's okay. Um, yeah, let's do it. So while we're still on Marvel, real quick. So you know, in uh, in Captain America one and in you know in Endgame and in Infinity War, like Thanos, like those guys. Uh, I and I maybe the Hulk. I'm not sure how they do the Hulk, but it's like the uh, they've done it with Samuel Jackson too as Nick Fury. So like the CGI where they make them look younger or or Thanos is yes, example like aging technology. Yeah, Thanos they like make him bigger and different, right? Like, but it's like when you edit somebody, almost like they're like a a skeleton, and then you like reshape them. You know what I mean? Like. Is that CGI, right? That is CGI. Because I'm wondering, because it's weird, because you would think that it doesn't work, but it actually works really well. You know, like you can look at Thanos and be like, I can tell that he's CGI, but at the same time, that's some of the most realistic looking CGI we've ever seen. Uh, and I think it's because it's based off a of real thing. So it kind of bound, like it's, I'm kind of like building off of our last point here where it's like, it's enhancing. They, they're not doing it from scratch, and that's why it works so well. Like, they already have a base that's real, and then they build on that. And I feel like that's why that CGI works super well. Because when I watched Captain America, I legitimately didn't know if Chris Evans was that skinny when he filmed it. I, I had no idea. Uh, but, but then when you watch the behind the scenes, you can, like, you can see that he's not. <laughs> so Right, of course not. Yeah. Like, I didn't know that when I first watched it. You know what I mean? I didn't know who Chris Evans was, so. Yeah. But, but, and, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, that guy was huge. He still <laughs> the first is. time you see him, it's still, he's, that's a big guy. <laughs> big guy. That, that's a man with the balloons right there. Yeah, dude. That is a, yeah, he, he's got a lot of them. He could probably, uh, he could probably buy two cars. <laughs> with the, all those doubloons. Yeah. So, talking about de-aging well, okay, so I think de-aging tech is a concept on its own, but motion capture is a whole other thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about uh, the way they did Thanos or uh, any of his lackeys or cronies or, like, smaller cap, that's all motion capture. But de-aging tech is a newer thing. They still did it on Captain America. Mm -hmm. but they've done it on... I feel like Disney's kind of the leading person to do this. I don't know how many other examples they do this on. But yeah. they've they've tried to do it on uh Harrison Ford with the new Indiana Jones. Yes. They did it on Chris Evans. They did it on um Mark Hamill for the Mandalorian season yep. two. Yep. They got the younger uh Luke. I think it's sort of works. Sort of. There's there's definitely ways to do it there's examples that work better than others. Like, uh, in my mind, anytime I saw Harrison Ford be aged, it looked kind of weird. Or some instances of Luke Skywalker de aged is weird. Right. But somehow Chris Evans playing old Cap, I guess that's age progression and not like de aging. Well, yeah, but, but that worked. The, the first movie uh, where he was de aged. You know, well, like, that's yeah. I feel like wasn't that didn't they just take his face and plaster it onto another person? I don't think so. But now now I'm second guessing. But I remember watching it behind the scenes and it being just an effect. So, well, if it is, then maybe it did work well in that way. But yeah, but it, it didn't. You're making me second guess since the other movies that you're mentioning uh, aren't as good. Right, so I'm like, well, and when I say aren't as good, I mean like, uh, the examples of the the de aging were not as successful. Um, which I haven't I haven't personally seen them. I'm just trusting your opinion on that. But, um, mm. well, yeah, it is interesting. Interesting take on de aging. I'm not sure how practical it will be in the future, only because, uh, a lot of time. Many of the cases that I've heard of the aging being used is to kind of get an existing legendary actor to play to return to a part 
that they did upwards of 30 years or more ago right yeah maybe that's why maybe that's why it doesn't work for those star wars parts because that's what they're doing uh or with harrison ford it was indiana jones but very similar um with captain america i that wasn't the case so maybe maybe that's why it worked if the, if it was cgi not I, I really don't know anymore but if it was then i feel like that maybe they had a more clear vision and maybe the more drastic change instead of trying to make him look like a younger chris evans they made him look like someone else like you know you know what i mean so maybe, yeah again like where cgi falls short is when they try to replicate something that's real right so I, yeah that's true like, yeah maybe that's maybe that's why but okay well so i just kind of think once newer stories are told maybe de-aging tech will be as i've mentioned before i definitely believe that we're in the middle of we're at the beginnings of an entertainment renaissance as it were where new stories are starting to be told and will need to be told to bring in this kind of new era, a new Marvel, a new DC, a new Disney, a new this and that. Uh, so maybe in 30 years, we'll revisit de-aging tech again and see how how it works. Is 30 it better? years? Dude, in 30 years, we're going to need some de-aging tech. That's true. <laughs> but so maybe, it's, it's maybe it'll be better by then. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's why we'll we'll revisit it because we're like, please de age us. We're too old. De age us, <laughs> please. So that brings us to um, motion capture, and mocap for short, as yes, doing, mocap uh, has also had a rocky history. Yeah. Um, some some early versions of motion capture were done by a guy. What's his name? Some director, I know his last name is Zemeckis, his name which is was cool. Mr. Motion Captanus Zemeckis, or whatever you just said. Yes, that, what you said. <laughs> I, he's his own species. Oh, his man. Own brand of person. But he, he kind of saw motion capture as a new technology and really tried to revolutionize it. But the products that came out of it were things like Monster House, um, Mars Needs Moms, and Polar Express. Have you seen any oh, of those? Oh, I haven't seen the Mars Meets Moms, but I've seen the other two. And those movies are and, great, and I think they still hold up, honestly. Okay, but you have to admit, the Uncanny Valley in those uh -huh. are pretty extreme. Yep, I they will not get better with time, I'll tell you that much. But I do think that they are still enjoyable as of today. But, you know, it's kind of like when you go back and watch Toy Story 1 and you're like, bro, like, these humans aren't humans. <laughs> um, you true. Know. But it's, true. it's better than Toy Story 1, you know, because, you know, the, the whole story behind uh, Pixar doing Toy Story as their, like, first uh, 3D thing was, like, uh, they couldn't, like, their humans didn't look quite right. So they looked kind of like toys. So they're like, let's just make toys it kind of in a similar way that fnaf did their thing where it was like he it, the guy who made fnaf made these models for his game and like everyone was like bro those look so freaking creepy and he's like oh okay so i'm just gonna make a horror game it's it's cool that like they leaned into it so um but yeah uh the two movies you mentioned were definitely like like they were they were amazing for the time but they definitely are missing that kind of like polish that we have today with motion capture and everything so um right definitely haven't well are they aren't gonna age super well <laughs> as time goes on <laughs> i mean i don't know when the last time you watched polar express is or even if you just look up clips of monster house um dude that's it's still nightmare fuel i look at it and I, oh, man it's scary <laughs> well, it's just we didn't have the technology to really we could capture the like wobbliness, the natural kind of wobbly nature of human movement, but we couldn't capture um, proper like rendering of textures and stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah. everyone just kind of looks really clay faced, but not necessarily. Man, is it weird? 
to watch. It's so weird. It is, but so, like those movies are so well done. In like besides that, you know what I mean? Like that. I feel okay. like this is weird to say, but I feel like they need like an HD remake that we get for video games. You know, <laughs> like can we get a then, remake of these movies? Because they're really good movies. They're just kind of held back by like the the graphics of the time. Mm. Um, yeah, I so. would say they're pretty well written. Polar Express has some weird weird beats to them. Well, yeah, uh, but it's all it. iconic. Also, the elves are. And, and, it's kind of scary and uncomfortable, but it's also kind of magical and like mystical. And Polar Express is a, it's, fair. It, it's a hidden gem for sure. I mean, I don't even think it's that hidden. Like a lot of people know about it, but uh, that's fair. I, that's I was fair. gonna say at least at least Monster House was a horror movie because anything kind of weird and unsettling in that movie, you could just say it's because it's a, it's a scary movie. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Actually, I was just shown a clip. I, I don't know if you remember that movie super well, but there's this like arcade dude. Yeah, that's really good at games and he like runs away but then he stops himself and comes back and grabs one of the kids yes. piece of pizza and eats it yeah and it, it's like all it's starting to yeah. show up on people's tiktoks and stuff Bro, it's so where they good. just take different items like my brother said at one point he grabs a hamster and just like noms it yeah dude yep yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> it's, it's so good it's just it's it, it's aged so weird. I watch him chew like the food, and it just looks so unnatural, weird. But so we we started there. Like those are some of the first yes. implementations okay. of yep. true motion capture. Yes, and I think one of the hardships that that those movies had was it was pure CGI. It wasn't humans with some CGI figures. It was every single person was CGI. Mm-hmm. Um. And just with the technology at the time, they weren't able to do super amazing stuff with it. But, you know, there were some films that were able to do really good things with it. Uh, an example of that is Gollum. Yeah. Um, yeah, I th- that holds up, you know. It's not, like, the greatest thing in the world, you know. Like, I'm not looking at it like, bro, oh, he's a real person. Like, I can tell he's CG, especially because, you know, his proportions on his face are just not realistic. but. Man, sure, yeah. man, is he gross and re- like realistic, and uh, the way he moves is just so on point. Like, it hasn't been too long since I've seen Lord of the Rings. It's been a couple years, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's a great example. It's I think it's so good because the actor, the good, good character design, and the acting really carries that. So even if the quality of the the uh, animation and just how what they could have done with the technology back in 2000 when the first Lord of the Rings came out mm-hmm. um, they can just do so much more with it now but back in the day the that guy's acting what was I don't even remember his name I don't the remember guy who plays Gollum. um he great acting really carries the presence that Gollum has which is supposed to be kind of like gross and slimy under the radar sneaky sly clever slippery kind of character and he does it so well yes i just looked uh, up the actor it's uh andy circus andy circus yeah just to shout him out you know because the man's a legend way to go man doubloons yeah. for you doubloons for you bro <laughs> straight from our cool car don't spend them all in one place bro <laughs> <laughs> now uh there are also uh some other good examples of motion capture done in in video games uh uncharted yeah. mm-hmm. is a good example yeah uh the one i that comes to my mind is the new uh devil may cry devil may cry 5 at this point uh, ah, the one. they that, use uh, motion capture yes the whole game is like motion captured and gotcha you know i know i know that uh like you know like red dead redemption and uh there's so many examples these days it's used a lot in video games nowadays like way and it's more interesting than it used to. it's interesting to point out that those are also done in pure cgi like uncharted is all cgi it's there's not i mean they do have motion capture but it's not like they film the real set and then 
plastered motion capture and everything. They designed the the settings from the ground up, and so it's yeah. all three D modeling. Yeah. So I actually don't know if it's if it's motion capture plus just all three D modeling. Does that fall into more of the animation I think side it does. of things and not just live action? I think it does because because uh, again, I feel like in my brain from what. I've learned during this episode, CGI is like taking something realistic and like adding to it. Uh, or, gotcha. or yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like so if there's no, if there's nothing real in what you're looking at, then I don't know if it actually qualifies. Which something that, real to compare it to? Yeah, but that's what's so interesting is like motion capture is the real aspect, right? Like that is what's from the real world. So maybe it still qualifies. Maybe motion capture still qualifies because you're it's just an invisible uh form of real life. Right. And you know, there are there is actually, now that I think about it, uh, some good examples of motion capture being used really well. Uh 2012's Avatar, the blue people one. Mm, okay. I still haven't seen Excellent it. use. <laughs> I still, what? I still haven't seen it, but I've seen so many trailers that at this point, I may as well have seen it. You know what I mean? Well, we're going to watch that and <laughs> talk about it because it's actually an excellent story. <laughs> and, the, and it's a it's sequel. The Way of Water, also really good. Really like that. That's what I hear. I mean, there's a reason why it sold so much, right? Like, like I, I, I'll say yeah. this. There's, like, of any kind of elements, either in video games or in movies or something if if you want me to just kind of like slobber all over your content put good <laughs> water graphics in there there are points in games where i'll stand and just stare at a cgi ocean for like 10 15 minutes mm. just like oh i love water it looks so good the way of water does that it scratches that need to for good water and cgi itch yeah, it for is. me it, I look at it. Granted, I've never made it through a full showing of that movie without having to pee, because I mean, water. it's it's a ton of water. Yeah, a lot of water. Uh, <laughs> and I made the mistake I, the first time. A funny story: the first time I watched that movie in theaters, I think it was close to opening night. Uh, I I did that thing that I always do, where I chug like a Dr Pepper before the previews are even done, and then I just don't have a drink for the rest. Just because it's something for me to do. Yeah. Yeah. But man, that's a that's a three and a half hour movie by an hour and a half in. First watch through, so hyped. I I had to go. It just wasn't I wasn't the we started getting into scenes with like beautiful waterfall. So they're in water. So all I can think about while I'm watching is how badly I had to use the bathroom. Second mm -hmm. watch through, uh, I drink significantly less water. I actually like almost dehydrated myself before watching, just so I could be like, I don't, I don't, I can watch the whole yeah, way. No through. interruptions this time, you know. No interruptions, right? I drank maybe a sip of Dr Pepper. I got to the same point that I was in the last time I watched it. I had to go again, and no just as way. badly. And I made it like seconds after the part that I needed to see because I missed it. I I watched that part, and as soon as I saw parts that I recognized, I'm like, "All right, I gotta go." Gee, that's crazy. And, I do. I, there must I be challenge. something about all the water in the movie. Yeah, something about it. It just looks so good and realistic and <laughs> and good. It, it's even alien water, and it. I don't know how that differs from normal water, but it it looks good. <laughs> Dude, the alien water it makes you have to pee. Right? Were you gonna were you gonna challenge us to to watch it without having to pee at that part? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's kind of like one of those, you know, the milk gallon challenge, where it's, it's just this really impossible and kind of dumb challenge. Mm -hmm. But if you want to try it, you chug a glass of water or something, and then watch the entire Avatar: The Way of Water without leaving dude yeah that's rough and if you can do it the balloon for you and a salute from me my good friend way of the water dude <laughs> the way of the water the way of the water speaking of water movies actually i did want to mention this 
one of the best uh, motion capture with CGI over it that looks horrifyingly realistic and it's awesome for it is Davy Jones from the Pirates of the Caribbean mm, movies. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's a he's a great example. I don't know too much. You can watch about those movies, but I, the dude Davy Jones, bro, that's that's some crazy effects right there. I actually really love the Pirates of the Caribbean series. I, I'm not really sure why. It's just such a fun movie. There's not you can't think too deeply about it because yeah. then you if you try and get into like lore, and it makes no sense. But Davy Jones himself is a great example of CGI. He in that, he, and I feel like the it's it's a kudos to the actor, Wh- whoever did the acting on that, he did so good. Um, I mean, was it a mix of name. like, like wearing, like, uh, what do you call it, like? Not makeup, but you know what I mean. It's like, was it him wearing like a Davy Jones like face mask? And then they CGI'd like the tentacles. Like I, don't, I feel like it, they maybe he like met him halfway. Looks like they did some face paint on him, and that they did that motion capture with the weird white styrofoam ball things on him. Mm, and then they okay. CGI'd all the tentacles themselves are each rendered by themselves. Well, that again, it's like they they had a really good base to do the CGI. It's not like they just took him. And made him Davy Jones out of nothing, you know? Right, yeah. So, dude, I just, I, this is what I'm learning. Out of all of these examples, it's like all of the best CGI has like a really, really good foundation uh, to build upon. Yeah, but, yeah it's, work off of uh, Yeah, what was the quote? It, it's not meant to uh, tell the story or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's meant to enhance a story, not tell it. Yes, uh-huh. So th- that is very true. Very true. Absolutely. Now, I do want to do kind of a case study comparison between Davy Jones and pretty much what I consider the stark opposite. Because so we've been talking about through the through the last uh, 10, 20 years or so of CGI, mm-hmm. how we've gotten better over time. How mm-hmm. we went from like kind of freaky, uncanny valley to like Davy Jones and Iron Man, excellent stuff. But now I kind of feel like it's going back downward. Mm, it's yeah. getting worse again. Um, kind of. I think it's more complicated. Than... It's not just that it's getting worse. I think we have more content coming out. And we also have people trying to, like, cut corners. Um, so, it. I don't know. It, I feel like big budget movies and people who are actually caring about their films and stuff like the CGI is going to be just as good or, or maybe, maybe what the problem is is that people are trying to go all digital. Maybe that's what the problem is. Cause like we just established that the best CGI is when you have a good base. But if, if, if practical effects are like not being used hardly anymore, uh, then the CGI is going to suffer for it. I think. What do you think? I can actually agree with that. It, as you mentioned, if you're using only digital effects, big budget stuff like Guardians 3, Guardians 3 is going to do good. Um, mm-hmm. it, it had really good graphics because they were willing to put in the budget for it. But one of the most recent two examples that I can think of that just had really bad CGI uh, is She-Hulk and Ant-Man and the Wasp. Those both had pretty bad CGI. Like the new Ant-Man, you mean? Yeah, the newest Ant-Man one. Yeah, the, those those uh, are both Marvel movies, though. I'm, I'm wondering if we can find an example that's not. But I'm, I'm okay, also... Let's I, see here. I also don't consume a lot of films and things that are anime. And, you know, anime, anime actually has some CG in it these days. So I will. I want to get to that in just a moment. Okay, okay. We can't yeah. scooch too far ahead on the train here. <laughs> I know. I'm just. I'm just saying that. Like, I'm more familiar with that. But um. But 
I do want to cover that here in a moment. I, um, I just I just want at least one non Marvel example uh, because I'm with you. Think. For for me, I would say the secret secret invasion show had some pretty Ugh. pretty bad CGI near the end there. So see, but that's also Marvel. I know it's also Marvel. That's the problem. I'm like, I guess Indiana Jones had rough CGI. I I just don't watch a lot of movies. Um, uh, let's see. What what shows have I seen recently that are new? I mean, Stranger Things had pretty good CGI. Um, let's see what else. I've... Oh, the the Justice League, uh, the original Justice League. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh! When they had to CGI uh, Henry Cavill's mustache off. Do you remember uh, that? I I I didn't see it, but I totally knew about it. Like, I saw screenshots and things where it was like, uh-oh, like, this isn't good. Um, I, and, you know, the One Piece show had, uh, that's recent, and it had CGI, but the CGI was actually pretty good in that show. Um, I mean, it was kind of weird with, uh, you know, Luffy's stretchy arms and stuff. Like, it's kind of just, it's, it's hard to make that look good. But at the same time, I am a little upset because I'm like, they could have made it look better. They, they really could have. But they 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 had an, a giant. They had a bigger budget than like Game of Thrones or something. So maybe maybe I should be mad that the CGI wasn't better in One Piece. It was just like passable, even though some of it, like the giant guy that comes out of the water, like the big like eel shark thing that comes out of the water, he looked he looked phenomenal. So I don't know, dude. Um, that, that that's probably the most recent thing I've seen. Uh, that has CGI in it. That's not Marvel, but we we can get back to your your Marvel points. Well, I just think, oh my gosh, the Flash. Maybe this is a superhero problem. <laughs> Maybe specifically with superhero <laughs> movies, because the the ones that are coming up to me is like Black Adam was rough, Justice League is rough, Green Lantern is notorious. I mean, for like, bad D- CGI. DC's just been struggling for a long time. It seems like. So. Um, because <laughs> like we've had a, a bunch of good animated films, um, and then there there is Sonic, Sonic Two, uh, pretty recent, and that yeah, one that, that one, one seems okay. Good. Yeah, that one seemed pretty good. So I don't know. So I think maybe, it's just a matter of yeah. Here you something's go. Something's going yeah. on with Disney. I mean, we all know something's going on with Disney, but like. Maybe it's just a Disney, a Disney slash superhero problem where CGI is just getting kind of worse, and I think people are getting kind of lazy. Like when I see She Hulk, it it doesn't. I remember looking at the first trailer for that and thinking that this is garbage, garbage CGI. It's it's almost like they weren't even trying. And what's crazy to me is the difference between She Hulk's budget. Let's see. I think She-Hulk costed about a million dollars an episode. At the end of the day, that show costed $225 million. $200? Each episode costing $25 million. That's ridiculous, though. Like, I don't... So how did... How does that make sense? How did they... That's so much money, and it comes out so horrible. Horrible. Absolutely worse. And then you compare that to Godzilla Minus One that just came out. Uh, for anyone who has not seen it, go see that movie. I Oh my gosh, it is so amazing. That is an amazing movie. Through and through, I want to do a case study on it here on this show. Just to... I cannot gush over this enough. <laughs> that movie had $15 million as yeah. its budget. Mm-hmm. So how did... A $15 million movie just go leaps and bounds above and beyond in the CGI realm over a show that every single episode costed $25 million. Dude, how, that how, is though? absolutely insane to me. Maybe we'll have to look at that at, at another time. Yeah, and because it's weird. It's She-Hulk doesn't come across to me as an expensive show. Like, I do think that, like, the fact that the main character and one of the... Like I, there are multiple characters in the show that are like CG guy characters, you know, like you have the Hulk and you have She-Hulk and you have uh, Abomination. 
all three of them like require a lot of CGI. But like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how much it takes to do that stuff. But as you said, it's not like the best CGI I've ever seen. But I am also a She-Hulk defender. I don't think that it's as bad as that, like people say it is. And I I don't think the CGI was trash, like you were saying. I, I think it's definitely below the bar. And I think that for $25 million an episode, it is definitely below the bar. But um, just as something to consume, I don't. I didn't think it was like terrible. But um, yeah, that it's we definitely... could go into a debate on that <laughs> for a while. It, it goes to show, <laughs> though, that like I, you know, if if you're passionate and smart with your money and everything, like I feel like you can you can really make something special with way less of a budget. You know, like, I, I think it is ridiculous how much of a budget a lot of the Marvel films and shows have, and they just don't deliver on it. You know, like, like Marvel's in a weird spot. That, that's a whole topic and debate, and everybody's talking about it like they're, they're not what they used to be, yada, yada. They should just stop doing things or making too much content. They should stop making shows and go back to making movies, whatever it is, right? And I do think that a lot, because you were saying superhero movies, uh, and it's kind of true because, you know, a lot of superhero movies, they require a lot of, you know, special effects and CGI because a lot of these characters need that for their abilities and for the fight scenes and everything people want to see. But I don't know, dude, I don't know what's going on. People just don't want to invest in it or they're just not like, I wonder how many people at Marvel are just uninspired or if. You know, maybe maybe they don't have enough time. Like, I know, you know, the whole stuff with the writer's strike. I don't know how much is being affected right. when it comes to the teams working on it. I don't know if they're trying to go fully digital and that makes it harder. I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's probably way more complicated than we think uh, while also being, you know, pretty simple on a fundamental level as like, well, you should just give them the time and the money and the tools that they need. You should have a good foundation you know, all this stuff, like, I don't know, I don't know what's going on, but I, I definitely agree with you when it comes to, like, how absurd the, the difference in budget is, and just, like, there's definitely a decline lately, I think, in CGI, uh, I, I, like, overall, but, you know, there's still some, some movies coming out, like, you know, Avatar 2 did come out recently, and, uh, yeah. you know, Guardians 3 is a really good example of CGI in the Marvel realm. So it's not like it's not good ever, but I feel like we, we really need to dial it back on all these superhero movies coming out. Um, and maybe like, you know, like and maybe this is more than a CGI problem, more of like, a, can we can we actually like spend time and make quality products, please? Um, mm -hmm. Instead of just trying to release things to make money. Uh, but, you know, that's how the world works. So, you know, hopefully. One so I think what we're learning, what we have learned from this discussion, uh, if you're trying to use computer, what was it? Computer generated imagery. Yes. Yes. That's it. If you're trying to use that, it goes a really, really long way to have an excellent foundation first and then build off of a pre existing thing rather than trying to make something out of nothing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's true. Um, but you know what they say, uh, CGI also stands for candy granny ice cubes that you can put in your drink Indeed. today. Go you find yourself some CGI and get yourself a nice glass of whatever you're drinking. Candy granny. <laughs> or you could, you, could, <laughs> you could CGI it into your, you could CGI the cup into your hand. And then there you go. CGI yeah. the, the ice in there. Yeah. Man, when when virtual reality mixes with CGI, that's a whole nother <laughs> realm. That's that's dangerous, <laughs> but also it's dangerous. But also, as soon as it comes out, I want to try it. <laughs> so, so uh, <laughs> one of those things. Right. Well, I hope uh, you guys have learned just about as much about CGI as we have. This has actually been really enlightening to yeah. kind of explore why to use it, when to use it, and stuff. And I think I feel a little bit more confident and comfortable in choosing to use it. Like if I were to ever use, like film a movie, I could, I have a better grasp of when or why I would want CGI to be somewhere. 
Yeah, it's true. I, I feel like I actually have a way better understanding of it after our conversation. So this has been awesome, you know? Perfect. Well, listeners, thank you so much for listening to today's uh, episode. So grateful. Hope you got a lot of doubloons out of it. Uh, hope you are going to go watch some of these stuff. If you have or have not seen anything we talked about, go ahead and watch it and let us know what kind of CGI uh, good stuff or bad stuff's in it and, and let us know and we'll talk about it. Yeah. Uh, it's Christmas time about when this episode comes out. So go watch Polar Express. You know, we mentioned it. Yeah, and, there you go. Uh, go tell us how bad the CGI is or how, how good it holds up. And, is know. it as nightmare feel <laughs> as, it is, yeah. as it once was? <laughs> yeah. And don't forget to like, follow, subscribe. Don't forget to rate us five stars. CGI your, us on your, your back. Walk around and yeah, tell people about us. CGI uh, like button and, and click yeah. it. And have everyone you know click it. Yeah, motion capture uh, we... your, yourself going into space and then you firework. Click that like button. The more creative it works, the more doubloons you'll get out of it. Yeah, we, we promise. Uh, I think. <laughs> I don't know if I have that many doubloons <laughs> to give out. <laughs> uh, our cool car. We'll have to check the card after this. But, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. With that, this has been Story Dive. I've been Kai. This has been Logan. Thank you so much for listening. And have a wonderful holidays. Bye. Merry Christmas. <laughs>